Hello, welcome to our podcast, How to Stay Married So Far. That's not my stomach, <laughs> that is a motorbike. If you're watching on YouTube, sorry we look like we've just got out of bed. It's so blooming hot, I have to keep sticking my head into underwater. I, to keep, I keep having to stick <sighs> my finger up my nose because it really helps. What are you going to say? God, you just jumped in straight Jeez. off, straight off the bat. Um, if you uh, haven't subscribed, do subscribe. And if you're listening on um, iTunes or Spotify or whatever we're on, uh, please hit the thumbs up or give us a nice review or something like that. Hmm. If you like what we're about to talk about. What are we about to talk about? This was your idea, this one. Today we're going to talk about the worries that we have about getting old as a couple. What yes. we think might be... Uh, the problems in our relationship down the line. You know, what are those things we go, oh my God, what's that going to be like when mm. she's 70? Mm. I thought it'd be quite good if we try and guess what the other one's biggest fears are. So fears what, of what each other's going to be like or what we're going to have to tolerate in each other. Mm. Or, I mean, because... Anything. Be, I mean, because it's quite... I mean, I'm, I never cease to be amazed or shocked that we've been married for as long as we have. How long have we been married? Um, 17 years. <laughs> Oh, are you proud to, of it? We've been together 17 years. We've been married 16 years. You look quite sweet then because you had like a little shy smile like you just never thought you'd be married for that long. No, I didn't. I didn't at all. I mean, no, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i in shock. <laughs> I mean, and I can't work out if it's good shock or bad. Why are you in joking. shock? Is that because you, is that like, because you never thought you'd be able to maintain a relationship or because... Is that more about you or is that about us? Well, no, no, it's much more about me. I mean, I think mm. I think it is. I think there is a pat on the back in there somewhere. I think it is more about the fact that if you'd have asked me way back then what would have been required to stay in a marriage with one person for that long, I don't think I'd... I'd it's not about whether I could have stomached someone for long enough. That's not what it's about. I've always believed in falling in love and being with someone and being loyal. The fact that it hadn't happened before was always a source of great upset to me. And, and you know, we've talked about this a lot before on this podcast. There are times when people who are, you know, serial philanderers are doing that because they feel mm. so unable to kind of potentially do the thing that they want. So, no, when I look at it, I do feel kind of proud. I do sort of think, wow. So when you were young, did you think, I want to grow old with one person? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've always thought that. And, you know, right down to my, as we've talked before, you know, my first relationship was a long-term relationship. And when I had that relationship, I was not thinking about this is only for when I'm 14 to 6. I've always entered into a relationship thinking this is a meaningful mm. relationship that will get stretched beyond whatever it ended up stretching, you know, reaching to. But the fact that we're together, I, mean, I suppose I just don't... I would never have given myself the credit to think that I could have been grown up enough to work at what I we've worked at. I still at. don't think we should give ourselves that credit. Well, I know, it is so far. I mean, it's weird. I, say, I feel like I've kept mm. in faith. It's terrible. It, 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 it's strange because before I had... Before I was married and before I was in like a long term relationship, I never understood it when people said I was really, they were really proud of being together. I didn't understand it because mm. I used to think that, you know, like a lot of young people do, that if you have to work at a relationship, that means it's not a relationship. That means you're not in love. That means that it's not meant to be, mm. you know, because when you're younger, you think love just means everything is easy and carefree. Mm. And actually, it's not. I think real love is about stick a lot of real, true long-term meaningful love is about sticking at it mm. as much as anything else obviously you have to have feelings and you have to yeah. still find your partner attractive and all those things but if you haven't also got the commitment to stay and work through the difficult bits and now I understand when people say proud because I'm proud of it mm. when I look back and I and I and also when you think how different we how very alike but how different we are also you know on paper this marriage would not have lasted. It just there's just no way no. on paper. No. Also, the fact that you always take the better lit position in this, and I've got a direct light above me that's just making me. Look I wonder like why you weren't listening like to a, a bloody skull. word I was no, saying. No, 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 I was. But I was, I was actually saying quite. Fucking awful. I was actually saying something quite meaningful, and it would be really no. obvious to the watcher now that you weren't listening <laughs> to, to a bloody watcher. thing, and they were probably thinking, "God, it is a bloody miracle we're <laughs> still alive." You were going. You were just looking. No, at I was yourself. horrified All when right, I saw when I tell said. me what I just said. <laughs> What did I just say? You were just talking about the wow, fact. Wow, he's that, scrabbling. No, now. no, you were just talking about the fact that you would have you 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 would you weren't yourself entirely, oh my God. entirely sold on the idea that you would have to work to keep a relationship to keep a relationship going, and the fact that that we have and that we did and and all that kind of stuff. You would never have thought that that was what was required, and 
we do find each other attractive. We do all that all that side of Such no man all, on that the side, all that side all that side I'm bullshitting my way out of a bag. Oh my paper god, bag. you've got three sentences and you're building around. Yeah, no, I know, I am absolutely. But so let's asleep. move on. No, okay, well um, look, but moving back to the idea that um, you know, staying together I mean, the thing is, do you feel that we're in a position now in our relationship where we've been together long enough to sort of say to ourselves, right, we're gonna try and stay together forever? Are we not doing that? <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? I thought that's what we were doing. No, no, I know, but you'd think that when you get married, I think a lot of people don't necessarily, even when they get married, I think everyone, a lot of people still get married and even think, well, there's always a get out clause. I can always get out of this if it's not right. And I think people, I do think there's often there's an element of choice. I don't view our relationship, as we go into this conversation, for example, and we're going to talk about things that we, we dread and fear the other's going to be when we're in old age. Um, but even as I'm about to sort of say those things, it doesn't mean that if you became those things, that means, ergo, I'm out the door and no. I'm off. Do you know what I mean? And I think, no. but for some people... Well, because it, it's the same with the things that we're both living with now that annoy us about each other. You know, there's... I would say it's absolutely down the middle 50-50 how annoying we are. We're, we're both annoying people to each other, but we work through it mm -hmm. because... It is only a part of our relationship. Mm. I mean, that's something that always happens, isn't it, in a relationship when you have an argument. Like if we're rowing and I say something to you and you say, and, and it feels like that that's all I'm saying about you, that that's mm. all encompassing, that's everything that I think about you, and it isn't, it's just a part of. So mm. it is about, in a relationship, like even when you're steaming, furious, mad, or just pissed off, is remembering that this is just a part, and like a day ago, or tomorrow, or in 10 minutes, mm -hmm. you're not gonna feel the same way. But and I think, I think because we're both quite fiery and very, it's like yesterday we had a bit of a row, and Maddie swan through our 17 year old and went, this is why two Scorpios should never get married, and walked through. She said, what was your argument about? I went, um, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think as you get as you as you have a longer marriage, you do like sometimes we still don't do it enough, but we're much better at it now. Going, do you know what? This is quite boring. Mm. Can we just not do this? But does that Can mean just get out? Of no, now? here we go. This is what I find annoying about. This is, okay, well let's start. So what, what, <laughs> let's start. What so, are the things that that you what's what's a sort of light hearted thing that you're worried? No, about? I think we have to guess what the other one. Oh, thinks. we're going to guess. Okay, well guess so, what mine is. So a more light hearted one is that I think, and it is a massive problem. This and actually there was just an article about it yesterday in the papers about how a lot of people actually consider divorce over this fact, and 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 they get quite desperate within a relationship. And I think you must worry about how much worse my snoring is going to get. <laughs> I, well, it's funny you should say that. I was worried. I get worried about. I never. I always remember watching my nan and granddad sleep in separate rooms, and you know, I was never thinking about how my nan and granddad, whatever they got up to, and all that sort of stuff. But I always remember thinking to myself as a young boy, God, I hope I never end up in separate beds or separate rooms. We but know, it happens because well, people we know get other desperate people, about older the sleep. people, people who get older, they do sleep in yeah. separate. I don't know if your parents. My do. mom didn't like that. Yeah, when they they did, yeah. but, but again, it's, she's a snorer, so they Is do. She? They Is do, and they do. Yeah. So that side of things, and what I've begun to discover is, sorry, it sounds like someone's coming in, but I think it's a pigeon. Um, I get worried that there's going to be a slow creep of normality to me going like this morning I went out at three o'clock it's hot admittedly but you were snoring like a trooper you always say film me and I always feel like the morning after you have a great capacity to make out like somehow you snoring is my fault and if, if I haven't got the evidence to illustrate to you how bad you slept no. it's no nothing's oh God, worse honey, than it is for you no no you that's snoring oh god you've got isn't that funny that's classic marriage misunderstanding it's not that at all. It's just because I want to play it to a doctor because they say record right. yourself because right. I want to know if the I've got sleep apnea. The last thing on my mind here. is finding my phone, turning the very it on, last... waking up more. I, I stumble out into into the hallway. The to very get last rest. thing, like this is classic what goes wrong in a marriage. So you've written a story about why I asked you to, to, to record my snoring and it's for a completely mm. different reason. But I don't think at all, I feel mortified that you have so little sleep because of me, mm. and I want to, and I want to find out if I've got sleep apnea. And two of my friends, no, no, it's not about that. Listen to what I'm saying. 
that have gone to the doctor worrying they've got sleep apnea, they said, get your partner to film it and record it so they can hear the level of sound. Right. So that's literally the only reason I've asked you. But yeah, no, so, I mean, so there's that. And so there's the idea that, you know, we will, that, and that's the problem I have with everything to do with what I'm fearful of in terms of the future, is how creep creeps in. You know, there's always drift. There's what I call, you know, mm. in behavior. And we all get it in every walk of life. It's what I call the plaque of behavior. It's like the brain plaque and the plaque in your arteries. Oh, but it's, so it's plaque. plaque of behavior. We have behavioral plaque where it becomes easier to just kind of go around that or it becomes easier to just keep doing that. And it's less sort of, you know, of an issue if you just do that and do that. And I find every night I go to bed, I go to bed now expecting to wake up. So I don't actually go to bed thinking I'm going to have a good night's sleep. Mm. And, and so there's the sleep side of it, which is one problem, which I've got bags that get going under my bags. But I do worry that that will mean that we do end up eventually sleeping in separate rooms. Mm. Also, it would be good if you drank less coffee. Yeah, no, no, I get that. I get, I get that. So you guessed that as being one of mine. That, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the fact that you've mentioned it, it's there. Yeah. But that wouldn't have been on your list. Um... I think the slow creep of sleeping in a different room would be one on my list. Yeah, but so for that's a variety, because of snoring, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, not just snoring. And it hot be and heat just, and hot yeah. and, in, and 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 that you you you're not a good sleeper. You've always sleeper. been an agitator. Yeah. You get anxious at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even before I used to snore, you would always be pacing around at night. Well, my, my brain comes alive after ten. It do, it just doesn't it doesn't do what your brain you've does. Got to have no and, coffee and, and before, I suppose, after one. But I suppose please. maybe within that snoring worry is. It, maybe it tickles at the edges of a bigger worry that I have, is that, you know, I worry that our body clocks are going to become more and more out of sync as mm. we get older. Well, yeah, I mean, and that is, that is a real worry that I have for you. Well, I'll say that when, it, when I say my worries, but, but because everybody knows, every health professional, and everyone will tell you that the best way is to wake up early and go to bed early, mm. but you're a night owl. Mm. So I'm wanting to go to bed because mm. I'm getting up at seven because mm. I prefer to be up early. And then you you go, you go to bed at like two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm knackered at 11. I want to go to sleep. But that is actually the healthy yeah, place to go absolutely. to sleep. I, I accept so, that. But I also accept that. We, but I used to be a night out. I used mm. to be that way around. So I get it. I completely understand yeah. it. And it is a curse if you go that. But I think sometimes it's because you're dreading the night that you don't want to go to bed. This, yeah, I suppose. But that does feed into one of my fears for you. So you see, you say you what? Fear well, I mean, the, the, I mean, I, I kind of feel like I almost can guarantee what your worst fears are. Your worst fears about what I'll be like when I'm just older one. are going to be when all of my paranoias about what I am. Um, I just think one of your fears is that I'm going to become more and more miserable, plain and yes. simple, and more and more of a bar humbug. Wow. Straight to the back of the net, bullseye. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and the thing that frustrates me about that, and I don't know... Hang on a minute. Yeah, no, no, no. Hang on a minute. I'll... You can't now be annoyed with no, the no, thing no. I'm going to... Oh, right, hang on a minute. You were just guessing, and then I was going to say it, yeah. wasn't I? <laughs> okay. Well, no, no, but just as a little codicil to that, and I don't know whether this creeps into most relationships. It's like the good cop, bad cop we've talked about on our other podcast. You know, we allow each other to occupy those positions. You're not a realist. You're an optimist. Mm. I think you can be both. You can, but you are a relentless optimist sometimes about stuff that I almost actively will refuse to join you on because I think that it's a dereliction of duty to be that optimistic in this set of circumstances, in this situation. I think that there's a real difference by, with somebody that is that also has a practical mind and thinks ahead, which mm. is what you're talking about, and you are definitely better at that than me, mm. and somebody that sees the darkness and the terror and the very worst in every single situation coming towards us. Yeah, and, I, and I think you, t more often than not, you tip into that. Right. And I hear what you're saying, and you are the practical one, and, you know, thank God you're really good with finances and all of that, mm. which I would admit I'm away with the fairies, but I don't think you should generalise it as all okay, women. Well, I really look, don't. All right. But... Um, and I know my failings in that, and I think that that must be very frustrating for you. But if we're talking about what my fears are for, for when we're older, is that I know what drives you to always see the worst. It's 
The same for a lot of people that live with proper clinical anxiety is the idea that if you think of the very worst thing that happens in some way, you're going to protect yourself from it. And I understand that. And I see it as clear as day. I see it as mm. clear as day. I know exactly what you're doing. But sometimes, a lot of the time, I find it really, really draining. I find it really exhausting because it will come in at me at any time of the day or night, your level of anxiety about something. And I might be away with the fairies or being positive or whatever and it's just it crashes my mood and I and I worry that as you I my worry is that when we get older you will become a bit of a curmudgeonary old man like what's his name I, I, really, I'm a bit worried I really worry that sometimes that thinking ahead you're going to become a real victim Eldrew because mm. well, like quite often that. I'll say things that in the past you would have been like open to seeing the sad side of that or soft side of it and now you just go fuck off. Well, no, no. Oh, well, that's interesting you should say I that. I mean, not outside of this, in, within the family, you're that's totally, not... but just, I think you've just lost some of your I totally compassion. disagree. I totally disagree. I think, I think, and this is one of the problems and fears I have about our relationship into old age. I think that there is a, and I use the term not, not you know, that at times I feel like you expect and you want and you demand me to have the same response as you, with the same intensity mm. to it, to what you're going through. And that if I can't or if I don't, you, can, you will suggest that perhaps I've lost a kindness or I've lost a, uh, a, a sort of an understanding. I just, it's, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with the subject or the thing that you're talking about. What I'm resisting when that happens is I don't want to be taken on your emotional journey at mm. that point. I don't want to be taken, and I think that's something that happens in all couples. Couples, especially couples that work together as intensely as we do, mm. you can easily hijack. And, and I really listened to you a while back when we did something about workaholism, and you said something along the lines of, look, I don't want to, it's very hard being with a workaholic because there's the feeling that because you're constantly going, I always feel guilty if I yeah. ever stop. And I really have thought about that a lot. And I don't know if you've noticed, I've tried, I, I, I've actually, since Cornwall, really thought about balancing things out and doing stuff for myself as much as stuff that requires the two of us working together. And I, when you said that, but equally, it's not necessarily around work, but I find that you have this contingent to you, and it might be around how the family's working, it might be around parenting, it might be about, I don't know what, self-care, all that kind of stuff. But it might be about stuff that's happening in the news or happening to other people. And sometimes I don't just, at that point, I just actively do not want to go to that place. It doesn't mean I don't have the compassion or the interest or the same understanding, but at the point you want to go into things very intensely when you go into things, you have to, you deal with things intensely. And sometimes I'm not at that level of intensity and I don't want to be dragged there kicking and screaming. Just as you don't with me, you want to be taken down to the negativity mm. and to the, the pit of depression. Well, I suppose that's two things that we both have to be aware of mm. if we're thinking about going to older yeah, age. Yeah, and, I suppose, and <clears throat> I suppose that's where I come from, the realist position. It's not, I, I totally hear you. There are times where I would fucking hate the fact that all I see in something is death, gloom and, and, and misery and all the rest of it. But equally, and so I, I hear that, but equally, you know, and you don't want to be taken down that emotional neg negative emotional route I sometimes don't want to be taken relentlessly to a place that requires a lot of energy a lot of noise a lot of fuss and nonsense for us all to know exactly what we we're talking about in the first place anyway and doesn't change the world and we've all expended valuable time and emotion and energy talking about something that we all know already and that I don't want to be saying that to you every time because I don't want to say so sometimes I do don't I don't connect or I don't join you on your journey mm. to it. And I think it's very hard when you're in an intense, intense relationship like ours and call it scorpions or what have you, that we both want each other to share completely the mission or the emotion or the feeling of injustice. And, and, and I do think that that has diminished over the years. I, I don't want to go there all the time. Mm. It's interesting, isn't it? Because we're both kind of saying the same thing, but from different yeah, yeah, angles. Yeah, different ends if we of actually the think thing, about yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. like, I don't want to always be miserable or, or anxious mm. or, or, or worried with the intensity that you worry about about everything and you don't want to be as you know involved in things as, as I you know you don't want to you know a, a lot of what I get passionate about is a waste of energy so it's mm. like 
so I get that. So we both, that's fairly similar, no, 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 but, no. but coming from different angles, but it's fairly similar. But that really, thing. that really isn't about dismissing what you're no, into. I don't, and I, I don't really, think it is. I really don't come from I a position of saying, is. I don't see that as it. I know, no, but, no, but no. Sometimes I, I feel you characterize me as being no, a bit dismissive, and I'm, mean, not, I'm really not. I just I don't really, want to go there emotionally. I really didn't mean it like that. I mean, I can't remember where, there was something where I was going to the fridge, and there was some, I mean, that was a work thing where you said, right, about, <laughs> you know, I went to the fridge to get a drink straight after workout, and you said, right, about tomorrow. And that's the complexities, and I just thought, no. Yeah, but you said no, not no, now, no, and no, I went, sure, and I okay, that yeah. Was a nice boundary. No, and absolutely, you responded to it. But I think just to the listener, it's really about finding a place with each other, and I think you're good at that, and hopefully I, I can get better at it, which is about respecting the fact that if someone just says to you quite kindly, look, no, I don't want to at the minute, just respect the fact that the other person is in a completely different headspace. I mean, you know, our problems are the mornings. Our, prob our problems have always been the mornings. You're, you're dancing and freewheeling and bouncing off the walls, and I'm not. And But I do think we meet at a different place in the day, and I think um, I don't want to pull you down in the morning, but equally, sometimes I just can't bear it when you're so so upbeat. But That's why I like to get up earlier, because I can have my vibe yeah, your time. On, on my own and not feel that I have to mm. not be happy or not be whatever I want to be everybody needs that everybody need everybody has a different way to approach the morning and mm. I think that's one of the really difficult things about being married because nobody is wrong and nobody is right it's just different and the thing is I, I think that's why more and more people do get up earlier in the morning so they can just have some mm. I love getting up in the morning and they're not being anyone down here and I can just just be it's not it's not it's not just you it's the mm. kids it's just anything just to have that space to just think um, shit so, on a, I mean, on a, in a bigger in, on, on a bigger scale. I mean, if I had a bigger worry about getting older, I mean, it was interesting actually. It only happened like a week or two weeks ago. When was it? Whenever the day we went to Andy Warhol, I worry that as you get older, there is a a more entrenched resistance to admitting when you're in a bad place yourself or you're struggling with something yourself or your mood has changed yourself because I mean I'm, a, I'm an open book I mean you can I mean all the girls say it. so you see you walk in I can see from the flickering of your eyebrows and the way your eyes are that you're struggling today or that there's a clip tone to you and everyone says is he angry and all that or is he having one of his bipolar episodes or is he you know so all of that sort of stuff so I get that and I do as best as I can try to really fucking react to that and listen I do you know, it doesn't mean I don't hey, make. Do, yeah, it doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. But a couple of days ago, or a couple of days, whenever it was, we went to the Andy Warhol. I was really worried about you. You seemed so distracted and at sea. And the girls asked, and Nanny Di asked, and I had a moment, without going into the details of it, of thinking, I don't feel I can ask her if she's all right because she's going to put it on me. I don't feel safe to ask what's up for her because I'm worried she'll immediately say, it's you being paranoid, you being this, you being that and being that. And it's something that really worries me in old age because it reminded me that day of when you were in your menopause and there felt like there was an inability to not, I had no interest in, uh, there was no angle. You know, I was trying to comfort you. I knew you were worried about your dad. And da, da, da. But there was a resistance in you and it really took me back to the menopausal days. And it really frightened me because I, I felt a total like, I don't know this woman. I literally don't know this woman. And I, if we're talking about things, when, we, when you mentioned that you wanted to talk about this, we talked about this as a possible subject before that day. And I remember when that day happened, I thought, maybe this will be an, an opportunity to, to mention that because I don't know how sometimes to ever come at you and say to you, babe, you really are setting an atmosphere, but not no one's cross about it. But why are you in, what's going on? And you were very, very proud woman and you do this thing it's nothing it's nothing absolutely nothing and it's like fucking hell it's everything it's, it's obvious but it, and I felt a little bit on that day like if I said anything you'd have just said no 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 and so I had to really skirt around it and for the first time I had to absolutely sit on my hands and say absolutely nothing but it was awful and I worry that that could happen more often well, what I would say to that is that's not our marriage. Our marriage isn't about me saying how I feel or do, and, that, and that's no choice. I'm a rescuer, you're not. The um, I'm a mum, you're not. It's just the balance goes that way is that, is, that, is, is that I've never been the person that sits and talks really, really about how I'm feeling or what's going on. I've always been secretive about my about feelings. It, but just I don't, I don't, I, uh, that, 
and it's very rare that I feel that down mm -hmm. and it wasn't something I could talk about and it wasn't the place to talk about it. We were on a day out and I felt really, really down. I felt very overwhelmed by COVID. I felt overwhelmed by London. I was really, really worried about my dad. You know, I'd come down in the morning to do a meditation and stuff. You'd come down early. It was just one of those days that had just gone wrong. And it wasn't about not wanting to say, because what I wanted to say was just lie down on the floor and sob my eyes out and not do anything. But mm. I couldn't do that. So I was just holding on to be the best that I could for that day, right. feeling really, really down. And it just wasn't the right place to say anything because mm. we were out with your mom and the kids yeah, but, and, no, and it is rare it's rare no, that I'm bad right. it's rare right. it's rare that I'm bad and usually if I feel really bad what I do is I just go to my room because I've always done that as a child mm. so that's nothing to do with you that's got to do with when we're growing up we all get given these labels don't we and I was always the kid that was like oh she's always all right and she looks after everybody that's my label my label has been given to me that I'm all right I don't the worst thing in the world when I was growing up was anyone to see me cry. I'd go to my room, I would cry, get it over and get it, get it done with. Now, on a level, we choose the people that are right for us. I chose you on a level without even knowing. And this is what the Priory taught us, wasn't it? I, obviously, I met you. You were gorgeous. You're attractive. You're bright. You're smart. There's all those things. But also, we know that there are rescuers and they're codependents. And on a level, mm. with everything we know about the psychology of a relationship, we know that that is at the base of us. Yeah. We know that. But, but and also, I... there's, there's an onus within that acceptance that we can accept that in myself, but the onus on me is to constantly check that and correct that and try not to make it a negative in people's lives. And you're absolutely right. This is not symptomatic of how you are most of the time. It's just that it was a curious moment where we were all from a position, none of us were thinking of it from a position of what, why is, we just were genuinely concerned. And I felt that none I of us I just quite felt really depressed. To, to I felt really that. depressed. And you know, sometimes when you just feel really down and you can't speak, mm. I just couldn't speak. If, if we had not gone out, I'd have laid in my bed all day under mm. the duvets. It was just a duvet day. It was just like, and I, mm. and I, and we're, you know, we're in the tape. We're in having a pizza. No, no, I can't, okay. I can't, but it was I can't a, no, articulate. No, 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 I get that. And perhaps in retrospect, you maybe you shouldn't have come with us. Because, I mean, I think, you know, it did, it just made me, it reminded me of a time and a fear that I once had when you were menopausal that I haven't had for ages, actually. And I was like, kind of stood out. And I thought, if there is an, if there's an abstract fear that I have, it's the potential for a total dislocation in perspective. It's similar to the thing that you were saying about, you know, that the gap that can just come in, people get a separate room, they get a separate yeah. bed, they get a separate... Um, but, you know, I think that all marriages have times when they can't reach the other one and they feel on eggshells because mm. they know there's something wrong with them, but they don't know what it is and they can't ask them. And if they ask them, they're going to get pissed off. I think that is the ebb and flow of a mm. relationship and everybody does it within a relationship. But... I do, I mean, there is a part of me, definitely, that never really believes that people do actually want to know how I feel. And that comes from being the rescuer and child. Yeah, it comes from being the, de being the sister, because my eldest sister was very, very shy. And um, I used to look after her all the time because she was shy. Mm. And... Um, and I, also I was just at a really young age. I was the person that everyone spoke to about their problems. So that became my part of my life force and part, part of who I, that's part of my identity. No, 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 I get And that. I remember when I was growing up and sometimes I used to reach out to friends or sister and say, oh my God, I'm really struggling every so. I remember each time I said it, probably three times when I was young, each time somebody said to me, oh, I, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, you're the one. And I remember retracting because it was enormously like embarrassing to me. Mm. And so I know that I've got a shell around me that goes, I'm fine. False information, nicely expressed, isn't it? Um, and I, I, I never feel like the worst thing for me is if I open up to somebody and then I feel that they're just a bit pissed off with it or it's a bit like... Mm. Mm. And it's like, I've always regretted it. So mm. it's just always better to just deal with it on my own. Yeah, no, and I, I also hear, as you're saying that, because that's very familiar, I hear that that's how you felt about me in the past. But I suppose all I'm trying to say to you is that as we enter the next stage of our lives mm. and as we get older together, I suppose your fear is about the bar humbuggy and I would characterise that as long as there's a bit of realism, I will check, keep a check on that. Equally, just... Just don't put on such a strong suit of armour as you mm. get older. I worry well, I that your suit of armour could get tougher and tougher yeah. and tougher. I mean, I, I try and I hear, what you, I hear what you're saying and I could definitely, 
I definitely know that's the truth. But um, these are... These unprecedented are, times. They are, <laughs> these, are these, these, are, these are traits that are entrenched from a tiny age. Mm. And these labels that we have, rescuer, mm. codependent, whatever, they're very, very difficult to... And I hope that where I am is softer... I can only, I know, for instance, I, I'm only ever going to be able to go so far with that. No, no. I mean, because the, I don't the, the, trust in that way. Yeah, but the point is, is that as everyone would testify who knows and loves you, and everyone, you know, you have such a loyal following, and people love you, and me and your friend Lee were only on social media the other day saying that what you see with Nadia is what you get. I know, being up close to you, how privately you keep all of your shit. And that, for me, is deeply frustrating on many mm. levels. I recognise that there have been many circumstances in our relationship, many individual examples where you could say that, actually, well, if I was honest with you, da da da, da. That's usually when it's about me. But when I do it... think we've chosen each other for who we yeah, are. Yeah, I, I think don't that think you were... just say that I think you were surround... No, but I think you were surrounded a lot when you were growing up with, with a lot of over-emotion. Mm over hysteria very much like my dad my dad chose my mom because my mom is very because he grew up around a lot of hysterical women and that was very difficult for him mm. and i think and if when i look i don't know the your previous girlfriends but what i do know of them there's also a kind of similarity there there's a rescuing element there's the women that aren't going to get yeah, no, up. I, I hear what and, and, and we choose that and then i i on some level i've chosen somebody that that I feel needs me because I need to be needed. But, and these are entrenched choices. But as much as they are entrenched choices, we are also entitled to shift in yes, that entrenchment. Yes, we are, absolutely. Because and that's not what just about... sign up to yeah. that, not just nail our colours to that mask and yeah. say, that's what I am. Well, because, because I think sometimes there's mm. a danger in that. You can say, well, I am an avoidant. I am an avoidant. And that can sometimes be used as the sort of get-out-of-jail card of, mm. well, this is what you signed up to. Well, not well, really. Except there has been... I, I was completely different when I came to this, and I've tried to shift. I'm not saying it's not all But, I, you know, I've tried to shift things, and I recognise that because it doesn't work for you, what I'm saying is, is that don't change completely, be entrenched, but just a little bit at the margins I think trust I, I think I have I, I say way more than I ever would have way way more I've worked quite hard on that mm. and I reckon and the thing is I have consciousness of it because I never used to have consciousness of it I was mm. just like this is just well I was just the way that I was and I find it quite painful to know what I am mm. and and you know as they would say in America America <laughs> You know, does this relationship bring me growth? And you're mm. right. It is something we shouldn't just say, well, that's the way I no, am no, and that's no, the way I am until I'm going to die. But what I, I suppose what I'm saying is I can't promise that I will ever get to a place of wild abandon where I'm really open, where I cry easily, where I share easily. I'm not for that. I, I, but I want to get better. Mm. But I don't think I'll ever no, be No, fully. I'm absolutely not asking for that. Yeah. What I am asking for is that when Movement. a loved one of yours, who's very close to you and in your real epicentre of commitment to you, mm. believes in you, who sings your praises, mm. is your is your banner holder and banner waver and is of true loyalty to you, not those members that you can even find in families that aren't particularly loyal, but um, if it's one of your absolute closest, closest confidants and, and, and trusted advisors. Uh, if we sometimes or I sometimes say to you, oh, I'm feeling that there's something up, don't just bat away because... I I'll try, I know, try, I but I, I do, I can try, I can only try, yeah. no. but it's not my nature. I I find it difficult to trust enough to mm. say, if I, for me to talk about how low I can go, I find that very difficult right. because that is the thing that keeps me where I am. And I don't want, that's why I only did a certain amount of therapy because I don't want to go as deep as deep no, as no, deep. No, but I don't want to go deep. It's not like I want to go no, deep. No, but, but sometimes when, <laughs> when, when, when you're picking up on me feeling very low... I want to just be on my own with that. It's right. not something that I can even necessarily articulate. Mm. I, I think, you know, I think when I look back as a child, I had some very dark times where I went to a very dark... And I know how to deal with it. I mean, people deal with that stuff in a different way. But that's not to say that I don't recognise that that's really difficult for you mm. or for anyone that does do that and tends to go away and lick their wounds. I go away and lick my wounds and I think that, that I would find that very difficult. Because it's like, when you feel down, I insist on knowing what's going on But with that might you. be why you're feeling that interesting thing you said at yeah. the beginning, which is, oh, I worry that you're becoming a bar humbug. That's why I turn off to some of this other stuff, because actually... 
I'm more interested in the real you. I'm not interested in the constant parking of rescuing the rest yeah. of the world. I actually am interested yeah. in you. Of course, I'm interested in those subjects and how they impact on you. But I would be more interested in them if I kind of had a sense more of you. Because what happens is you distract around who you are and what you're feeling by the catastrophes going on around mm. you in the world. And you channel yourself through them. It's what makes you a lovely person. But also, it can be for those closest to you quite frustrating. Because it's like, I don't actually want to think about such and such on the other side of the planet mm. going through such and such. Yeah. I'm interested in that. So I love. Whereas I'm just, my heart's breaking for people in Beirut. Yeah. Breaking. No, I'm not saying, but you see, that, but so am I. No, I know. No, I know, but, but like, no, what I'm saying, I just do distract. Yeah. Um, so Bob, this is very, very personal, this. It's very I don't intense, know if we should put this snoring out. Snoring and what? We went from snoring to. I don't know. Bar humbug. So you were. I'm worried about you snoring. You're worried about. Yeah, me I'm actually hard, gonna. Though. I'm actually gonna combust. We. I think we yeah, need I to end it here and do part well, two. There you go, guys. That was intriguing, wasn't it? What are we most not dreading, but worried about in each other? In yeah. Our what are the entrenched things mm. that, of course, will only get worse as one gets older because one pays less heed to them and yes. takes less time with them. It's quite a good thing, listener, to maybe have a discussion with with your partner. Yeah. What are those things? Because the do great this setup. Th- like the great thing is. Like I just said to Mark there, I have consciousness of it. Now, that might not sound like much, but it's massive. Mm. Because when you really don't have any idea of what you're doing, then it just gets worse and worse. Mm. I, like when I just said to Mark there, I can't promise that I'm going to be somebody that opens up to the level that you want. I can't promise that I will make that, make it, make that before I die. It's an ambition, I would like to, because I think that that is true intimacy when you can really, really share. But I doubt it. I can only be get better, but I'm not going to get where you need me to Just to to clarify, codicil clarification here. One of the things I know you find really annoying with me is you think I'm pedantic and I home in on the details and I get really... Sometimes you will brush over details, and this is for another another podcast. You (laughs) You brush over details when the details are the thing. And that is something else that, you know, so the details of what I'm actually saying, I don't want you to be able to do all of those things. The details are just on occasions when you are struggling, just say, look, Mark, I'm having one of those days. That's all that it requires. Because sometimes you'll put, you want to keep maintaining that you're not having one of those days and it's blindingly obvious you are. And Well, okay. Well, if I can say I'm having one of those days, will you, can you then not ask me what's wrong? Utterly respect it. If you utterly can say, respect well, it. I did simple, say that. Not really, babe. Not it's really. very upset no, about no, the other no, day. No, 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 I'm not upset about the other day. I was worried for you, but then I felt like there was something Thing that you were cross with me and then you were very odd with me. I was just thinking, well, this, this is really is very hard. personal. I honestly I don't, don't think we should put this out. We're going into the detail of the detail of the detail no, of a day out. No, we're not. It's <laughs> symptomatic of other stuff. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you like what you thought, what you heard or what you thought you heard, give us a thumbs up. And if you didn't, sort off. No, but also, you know, maybe think about having this conversation with your partner. Very useful, putting up just yeah. two cameras and having a chat together. Because you can just think about, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to change. It doesn't mean you're going to be fundamentally be able to do, or even that you could, you, you agree. I mean, I do agree with everything Mark said to me. I actually do agree with it. And, and it will, it gives you food for thought. And I yes. think it's really important in a relationship to, to have food for thought. And even already, if that's I was already thinking about what I thought you probably would have thought. Your worst fear of the years, which is the bar humbuggy thing. So I was like, you know, I am. Well, it was that, and you having a stroke. But there we go. We'll save that for another day. What kind of a stroke?